Hey, I'm going to be live streaming soon, so you should follow my channel. How I skip steps that led to disaster, how I step away in order to gain perspective, and how I sit in the struggle bus. My name is Eric Canetti, you're watching Redraw, and today I'm drawing Skeletor. If you're looking at this piece and you're recognizing that it's not quite polished or it's not quite taken to a level of finish that you've grown accustomed to uh, in my previous pieces, I would say you are spot on. And I think that's the theme of today's video is how much I struggled through this image. So here we go. I think one of the things that... Uh, Actually, there's a lot of things, but one of the things that got me into trouble with this piece is that I didn't really form a plan uh, for what I wanted it to look like or what I wanted it to feel like. I literally just started drawing. Now, that's not to say that you have to have a plan at the very beginning. There is value in the exercise of just drawing and kind of shooting from the hip. But with something like this, um, and a couple of those challenges I'll, I'll, I'll spot right now, which is me not being comfortable drawing animals. I had to come up with a relatively mm, usable composition for the aspect ratio that would be this YouTube video. And then finally, me not being 100% comfortable painting in color. Those are a lot of different things that I had to negotiate for this piece. And so without a loose plan in place, I kind of uh, got myself in trouble. And um, uh, pardon the term, painted myself into a corner as to what ultimately I wanted the piece to look like. I mean, you could really, you could really already pick that out from the very beginning in the sketch stage. How much I was um, struggling with the piece. It didn't really come from the fact that I've never drawn um, the subject before. In this case, it's uh, Skeletor or Panthor, but. It wasn't because I didn't draw them before, it was a, it had a lot to do with how I wanted the, um, uh, I guess uh, for the lack of a better term, like how I wanted the piece to sit, right, uh, in the environment. Like I did so many, you can tell, like I did so many sketches just trying to get that composition right, trying to make sure that Skeletor was actually sitting on the, uh, on Panther there and in such a way that was semi-convincing and, and what I mean by that is that, you know, Panther has volume, right? So he's effectively sitting on a barrel, right? A, a barrel-shaped body, and I couldn't quite understand how to make that work. It was a struggle from the very beginning, and I think that's one of the main reasons where I couldn't take this thing to a finish before I had to get it ready for this video, but it's okay. I, I figured that gives me a little bit more time for next one. I promise I'll, I'll have this... Uh, piece finished uh, sooner rather than later. Another thing I'd come to realize as I'm watching this playback, and my brain wasn't really in that headspace as I was drawing because it was flexing a completely different muscle, so to speak, but something that I'd recognize is that I think I jumped into the uh, painting process way too soon without having the foundational drawing kind of nailed down. I mean, it isn't to say that it has to be 100% nailed down. There's uh, adaptation that can happen during the uh, entire uh, creative process. But certainly, uh, for, at least for me, what works is having it be about 75-80% there. And uh, my impatience got the better of me. And I just wanted to start painting because I thought, hey, this is going to be the fun part and I could always salvage it later only to, um, that, that only helped us uh, highlight how um, uh, unprepared I was for that next step. So if there's anything that I can impart to you, if you don't mind, I say get um, and make the foundational drawing, make the foundational uh, uh, first steps as strong as possible before you get way too, uh, way too far ahead of yourself because uh, once you do, everything is about recovery, not adaptation, right? Recovery is a really bad place to be in because you're trying to make elements work and sometimes it just doesn't and you could have done a lot of that. Um, I'm speaking to my previous self now, but I could have saved myself a whole lot of time if I had just sort of problem solved ahead of time to get myself into that 75-80% uh, safe foundational space. Anyway, lesson learned. If you scrub back a little bit, you can see where I started over in the painting. And uh, you can also see, and by the way, fair warning to those of you who are uh, 
sensitive to like things blinking on and off very very quickly it's just the nature of the time lapse but you can also see where i was turning layer uh, on and off to see how far along i had come in my painting versus what i had sketched and i think somewhere in there i'd come to the sobering realization that yeah i definitely had to start over because i had strayed so far away from what i had sketched down you will be able to um, and I want to point it out to you now, but you'll be able to notice how much struggle I had with the sketch version of Skeletor's skull face versus what I was trying to render, and I just could not land it. And I I'm telling you, that was a big, big struggle. That took almost all of my morning and uh, super frustrating, but I knew that I was, um, I needed to redo it. If you are enjoying the train wreck that is this painting so far, do me a great big favor by clicking on that subscribe button if you haven't already. And while you're at it, click the notification bell so that you will get a little notification when my videos go up. I'd really appreciate it. Let's continue down the disaster hole that is this Skeletor image. What would have saved me an enormous amount of time in rendering this panther is if I just reached out to my good friend Dave Coleman. I'm going to uh, link his Instagram down below. Uh, please go check it out and follow him. He's a phenomenal artist and just knows animal proportions. I mean, he's, he's an all-around great artist, but he's the high bar that I use when it comes to um, drawing really great um, uh, pushed proportions animals. He, ju he just has his, he just has that zoned in, man. I should have just reached out to him and asked him to save my butt when it came to this panther, but there you go. Go follow Dave, because he's a better artist. <laughs> okay. In hopes of salvaging this, uh, this video by not having it be a complete downer about my failures and in inability to take this Skeletor image to a finish, I want to attempt to kind of uh, turn this around by saying it's okay that, uh, maybe I'm speaking to myself here, but it's okay that I can't quite land this uh, Skeletor image to a point where I'm happy with it. I think the best thing to do for me is to just kind of put it down, step away from it for a while, and then come back to it when I have a fresh perspective and I've had some time away to sort of consider all the things that I have done incorrectly, but more importantly, all the things that I can do to make this thing better. So it's okay, Eric. Come back to this, uh, come back to this image much later. Do another image later, uh, in the meantime. And then I'm sure, I believe in you, buddy, that you're going to be able to take this thing and make it look so pretty. Okay, high five, dude. That is quite possibly the most unconvincing self-pep talk I've ever given. Pep talks are lame. Things to note for myself. I've got to land that volume for Panthor so that he's actually a three-dimensional object that Skeletor is sitting on. Ramp down some of the saturation throughout the image so that uh, your focus goes to Skeletor. And uh, anyway, that's for later. For now, I want to thank you for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. If you're not following me on my social media already, you can find me on both Instagram and on Twitter under at Eric Kennedy. Um, thank you for uh, sitting in this struggle bus with me. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.